Hello. Today I'm going to be making a tutorial for Game Maker HTML5. Um, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make um, a box of colors that can switch back and forth between various colors. Um, if you replace the colors with icons, you can easily make this uh, used to select items or equipment or spells or skills or whatever you have. Anything you have that needs to be selected that you don't want to have a bunch of options shown up on the screen at once, you can scroll through them uh, using the arrow keys. Uh, left arrow key will scroll me all the way back to red and right arrow key will or to the left all the way back to red and then right arrow key will scroll me to the right all the way back to red. It loops and that way you don't have to go all the way to blue and then stop and then have to go in the opposite direction to get all the way back to red. You can just jump between them. Alright, so I'm going to uh, show you how to do this from scratch. First of all, I'm going to open up Game Maker HTML5 and then I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to name it Magic System Tutorial. Do, do, do. Tutorial. Alright. Create. Overwrite. Uh -huh. Maximize this. Alright. First thing we need to do is click on this Pac-Man icon to make a sprite. Um, I use camel casing. That's just the name of this naming convention that I use. Where um, you start off with um, lowercase letters uh, to signify like what kind of an object or whatever it is you're creating. And then any word after that gets a capital letter at the beginning. Um, if it was player Bob, I would name it like this. And as you can see, that is very easy to read much easier to read than all lowercase letters. You can see the differences. and um, You can tell when a new word starts, so yeah, that's um, my favorite naming convention. I use that, called Camel Casing. Edit Sprite. Alright. Um, I usually just cha change the uh, icon size down to uh, 16 by 16 or 50% just because it's a lot fewer pixels to use than 32 by 32 but in this particular scenario I'm not going to do that because I'm just going to use the paint bucket so I'm going to color this red and we're done with that now I'm super lazy so I'm just going to control uh, C to copy and then I'm just going to control V to paste, 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 paste. Um, this is, think of this as basically um, a different icon. All of these are going to be different icon. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to change this to yellow. This one will be yellow. And then we will have a green one. And then we'll have a teal one, and then after that, a blue one, and then finally we will have a purple one, yeah. Okay, so we have a nice little rainbow of colors here now. Um, and so these are going to signify different icons, and they're all under the same image, which just makes it really easy to code uh, later on here. So, um, I named this player. That should probably just be uh, colors. It's not really a player sprite, but... Um, and then we need to make an object. We make an object by clicking this sphere icon. Um, I'm going to name it Object Selector. And yeah, we'll do no sprite because it really it's not going to be showing up or anything. Um, on the create event, 
and actually if you did have a player object you could have you could easily just since this object doesn't need a sprite um, we're going to make it show up in the draw event so you can actually just do this on your player object excuse me I just uh, belched there um, so you can easily make do this on your player object uh, you just put this put the creative in in your player objects creative in put all the coding for the step and the draw events in their um, respective events on your player object whenever you have that but I'm not going to make a player object for sake of time and I'm going to do the code function uh, let's see here on the creation we only need one variable and we are going to name this variable selection because this is going to keep track we're going to set it to zero this is going to keep track of what the current uh, selection icon is what, or rather what the current selection is um, which in this case is only going to be significant the icon alright so we've got that done with the create event now on to the step event and in the step event we're going to be uh, checking if using if statements we're going to be checking the keyboard to see if the um, right and left arrow keys are pressed and those are uh, we'll start with the left key so that's VK which stands for virtual key um, left tab make it the block and then what we're checking here or what we're doing here when the left key is pressed is we are changing selection we're subtracting one from that so we're subtracting one from selection and you do that by this this will subtract one from whatever the selection variable is currently now this will present a problem because when we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, if we have 0 and subtract 1 from 0, we will end up with negative 1. None of our image indexes or indices um, have a value of negative 1. Therefore, we cannot, nothing will change. It will just stay at 0 if you continue pressing left. In order to make it loop, we need to, when this is, when this, when selection is less than 0, we want it to jump back up to here um, to 5. So to do that, it's very simple. We just um, check selection to see if it is uh, less than 0. And this is called a nested if statement when you have an if within an if. Um, it's like exception. So when we have the selection variable less than zero, make a new block, um, we're going to be changing the selection variable to equal five. So that way it'll jump from here to here instead of going from here to here. Now, we're going to do the exact same thing again down here, but we're going to do it for the right key. So if keyboard underscore uh, check pressed we're going to do vk equal underscore uh, right that will be the right key the right arrow key and then make the block and we're going to do this uh, is the inverse of the code above so right here we're going to do selection but 
This is for the opposite direction, therefore we will be adding one with each press. Now this raises an another conundrum of right here um, where we had if selection less than zero, we need to do that again, but this time for five because since we're adding one, if we add one to five instead of going back to here the way it currently is, it will go up to here. So we don't want it to go up here. We want it to loop back to zero. And in order to do that, we just do what we did above. Do a nested if, an if within an if, and then selection. So we're checking to see if selection is greater than five. And if selection is greater than five, make a new block here. Oop, I spaced instead of tabbed. All right. So then we're going to select or er, uh, change selection to zero, and that will make it jump from five to zero. All right. That's our code for the step event. And now all we need to do is add the draw event, and under the draw event, do a code action, execute code action. Um, we d are, all we're doing here is we are drawing the, uh, the sprite out. So we're just using the draw sprite function. And in here, uh, it's going to be sprite, in my case, color, or whatever your sprite is named. It's going to be that. And then for the sub-image, the sub-image is going to be the icon. And the icon is equal to, the icon's uh, index number is equal to selection. Therefore, sub-image is equal to se selection. And what that does is, um, Whenever it draws, it draws the sprite every step. So each frame is going to be updating the sprite, and each frame before it draws the sprite in the step event, we are changing the va value of selection to what it, to equal selection. So then, when it gets to the sprite and draws selection, it will draw uh, whatever um, icon has the image index that is equal to the value of selection, which will be a numerical value. And then for the x, um, the, I didn't change, I didn't even make my room yet, I'm just going to have it be the default dimensions of uh, 640 by 480, um, but I want the square to be in the center, so I'm going to divide those by 2, so that'd be 320 for the x and 240 for the y. And that should do it. Um, now I just need to make the room, which is this uh, window-looking icon up here. Just do that. And then we need to place the object, object 0. Just place it anywhere. And then that should be the end. All right, let's test it. All right, so here we have this big old giant red square. You can press F4 to go into full screen. That's just a default with Game Maker. And then we have this big red square. Pressing right turns it yellow. Pressing left goes back to red. Pressing left again goes to purple. And pressing left all the way till we get back to red. There you go. It works. And I'm just pressing over and over and over. Make it go through all of them. So, yep, you can use that to, uh, just change the icon or even the equipment using an array you could change like everything about uh, whatever the selected item is change all of the values to the selected item so and that's that thanks for watching bye bye